Philadelphia's number one hockey beat reporter, Charlie O'Connor, another uh, survivor of, you know, the um, the three C wars, the original, the original Corsi wars in the Battle of Couturier. Uh, Charlie, just uh, f- before we get into that, w- what was your impression of the game tonight? I think they played well enough to win. They obviously got some good fortune. You're talking five good. posts that Toronto hits. That said, I do think the Flyers played a perfectly fine game. They didn't dominate, and I don't think they're going to dominate, given the fact that two-thirds of their blue line core is, you know, veterans who probably would be number seven defensemen on really good teams and rookies that are still trying to figure out what the heck they're doing at the NHL level. I, It wasn't an amazing game, but they played well enough to win if they got some breaks, and they got some breaks. And that's really what it boils down to. And I think to me, too, the big thing, and this was probably the most encouraging thing out of the game, was, and I actually asked John Tortorello this after the game, you know, about what he thought about how important it is for these guys to step up. You saw the young veterans on the team. You're not rookies, but certainly not older guys. You saw them step up. You saw Owen Tippett and Morgan Frost deliver really good games. You saw Cam York deliver a really good game. Travis Sanheim, if we're still putting him in that range, had a really good game as well like these are guys who aren't old they're not you know the garnet hathaways of the team they're not the mark stalls of the team who obviously didn't even play but point being is that these are veterans they're not rookies but they're also not super experienced either i guess with the exception of sandheim and i thought in a game where the flyers really needed a win like they needed something they needed to at least get a point out of this game just to halt this this run given how many tough games they still have coming over the next week, they really needed something. And it was those guys, the guys that are 24, 25, 23 years old who carry the team. And I think that's really encouraging, not just now, but for the future as well, that they are able to step up in a game like this. Absolutely. And someone who, uh, well, you know what, let's talk about, let's talk about Tippett and Frost. Cause you, cause you mentioned them. Uh, I thought it was imperative that those are kind of the guys that step up in this one. And TK as well, uh, I wanted to see maybe a little more out of him, but his line was really good tonight. But those guys are the building blocks here, and I think those guys are as big a part of the message of the Couturier benching as Couturier himself. Like, I I don't know, just... What what will it mean for this team for them to be to have this experience going forward, being the guys on this team right now? It's a good question because that was what Tortorella emphasized when I asked that question to him was that so much of this next month is going to be huge for those kinds of guys. Like they're not expecting Bobby Brink. I don't even think they're expecting Tyson Forrester as much as that Tori seems to love the guy to to step up and carry this team. They want to see the the not vets, but not rookies be the guys who step up. And tonight, that's what happened. That was huge. I, I did think, so So we'll get into this Couture, obviously, in, in a few minutes, I'm sure. Tortorella would not answer any questions directly related to Couture, but the one time he at least yeah, hinted at it was when I asked the question about the young vets and how they played. And he, he got this little, like, little aside in about, you know, I'm playing the guys who are, I'm, I put the guys in the lineup who are playing the best right now. And the implication was that these are the guys that are playing the best right now, the guys like Tippett and Frost and York. And I do think you know, he betrayed it a little bit. He wasn't willing to give much on the Couturier scratch, but he betrayed it a little bit in that I have a feeling that part of his thinking in that brain of his that we cannot even begin to understand sure what's, what's ticking in there. But I think part of it probably in his head was you take Couturier out of – this mix for a game or two, I guess we'll see if he comes back in, who the hell knows. Um, it will kind of force guys like Frost and Tippett and York and, and other players that are in that young vet pool to kind of sink or swim. That they can no longer depend upon Sean Couturier to get those tough minutes to close out a game that it's on them. And if they don't do it, nobody's going to because Coots ain't on the bench to save them anymore. I, I honestly could see towards his towards thinking that 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 could have played into it. doesn't mean I agree with it, but the fact that that was the only question he answered with any sort of even, you know, passing reference through the lineup Hmm. tells me that that was at least part of his thing. Charlie, uh, I I don't know if Sam Erson was great tonight. 
obviously got the help from the posts. Uh, now, every goalie will tell you it's part of the equipment. But, you know, it also so means saying. the puck is behind you. Um, I thought this was, if nothing else, a building block game for Airson. What did you think of him tonight? Yeah, in all honesty, and I know he had a lot of pucks go off the post. I thought he was good. I don't think he was amazing, but I think he was good. To me, this was an example of, you know, we've talked about it over the last week, that you could sort of tell pretty early whether it's going to be a good game or a bad game. And if it's a bad game for Harrison, it's going to be a real bad game yep. that you could tell within the first five minutes. I could tell within the first five minutes that we were going to get good Sam Harrison. Now, yeah. we certainly didn't get great Sam Harrison. He wasn't perfect. That said, I mean, I'd have to really dive into those posts to see how many of those were he got cleanly beat and got bailed out and how many of them were he actually had the angles and that was the only thing that he made available to the shooter. I don't know off the top of my head. I'd really have to study the tape to, to make a, a determination on those. But I don't think this is a case of Arison stunk and got bailed out. I think Arison mm -hmm. was good. And you got to remember, like, the, the Maple Leafs are a damn scary offensive team. Okay. And holding them even just to three goals and that that last one you know okay they're they're pushing hard they pull the they pull the goalie they got the extra attacker like yeah toronto is probably going to score there at least one when they've got three minutes of of extra time with a uh, or three minutes of time with an extra attacker they scored once in the power play that one goal where um you know paling and Cates kind of lost the guy in front. Sandheim wasn't able to block the pass. Like, there's no way Harrison stopping that one. Like, come on, that that's just that that's an unstoppable shot given the pass and the guy wide open in front. So I don't think this is a case of Harrison getting lucky. I think it's not like he dominated, but I think he played well. And the Flyers just needed him to play well. They played well enough to win this game if their goalie didn't lose it. And Harrison, after a few days off, he obviously didn't get the Saturday game. He played a game where he played well enough for the Flyers to win if they did other things right, and they did. Do you, just with the idea of he played better with a few days off, do you think they manage him a little more? There's no way they put Sandstrom back in unless it's a back-to-back. -back. Do you think his workload's going to change at all, or it's still going to be like, hey, man, this is your net, sink or swim? Well, I, I think this weekend is a back-to-back, -back, so Sandstrom will get one of those games, to be sure. Um, I personally would expect to see Arison in against Carolina. Yeah. Just because it's not like Sandstrom impressed too much on Saturday. Like that goal, we talked about it on Saturday, that goal he gives up to kind of halt the comeback or at least, you know, slow down the comeback because they ultimately score again to cut the lead back to, to one goal against Boston after Sandstrom gave up that uh, that crushing goal late in the third period. But you give up that goal, that's not the kind of sequence that – is going to convince an already skeptical John Tortorella who's never been sold on Felix Sandstrom, I need to get this guy in more games. That is going to say that, hey, even if Arison is maybe wearing down a little bit, even if he's hitting a little bit of a wall, even if he's maybe just not quite perfect from a technique standpoint, you know, quite as sound as he was a month and a half ago, even 80% of Sam Arison is still probably more trustworthy than Felix Sandstrom. That's the way I think that Tortorella is going to look at it. Now, it's a back-to-back. -back. I fully expect Sandstrom to get one of those two games, but I don't think we're at the point yet. And I could be wrong, but I don't think we're at the point yet where Tortorella and Kim Dillaball look at it as, okay, well, Arison Delit gave us a good game on Tuesday. Then now we'll go to a timeshare where we'll give Sandstrom Thursday, and then we'll split the games on the weekend. I don't think they're there yet. I would fully expect Arison to get Thursday's game. And honestly, I, I look. I don't agree with every decision this coaching staff makes. I certainly didn't agree with one of the big ones they made tonight. I do agree that even if Sam Harrison isn't at peak form, even diminished version of, of Sam Harrison is better than Felix Andrew. I, I think that is true. Uh, before we get to the Couturier stuff, I just have to ask, Charlie, who is the Flyers' best defenseman? Um. Well... I mean, right now, if we're talking about right now, Cam York is playing the best. Yeah. I do not think I – like, I heard some, saw some people in my mentions being like, he's been the Flyers' best defenseman all year. Don't think I'd go that far. I think Travis Sanheim on the whole over the course of the season has been the best. He mm -hmm. just cracked 40 points this year for the first time, so good for him. But right now – and I don't even think Sanheim's playing that bad. I think Sanheim had a, had a very he good a game. Good game, yeah. But Cam York is playing really, really well. And – Credit to him. You know, it's not really showing up in the advanced metrics, but they're giving him 
a lot of minutes. Tonight he got 26 minutes. I think against Boston he got 27 minutes. I mean, they are piling the ice time onto Cam York, and he's really just running with it. I think this is – I'm still skeptical that Cam York can be a, a first-pair defenseman on a cup contender – but he sure as hell looks like a rock solid top four defenseman, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he can be a, a number two or even a number one on a good team if he keeps developing, because by the eye test he's killing it. The numbers not quite as good, but by the eye test he's doing a lot of things right, and he's doing it with a heavy, heavy workload right now. So props to him. All right, it's time, Kelly. Is it time? Couturier, the floor is yours. Charlie, what in the world do you suppose? this is going to teach 32 33 31 31 31 in december what's he learning from this little lesson that he's being given by his head coach because i can see bobby brink learning things i can see morgan frost learning things if you want to make that argument what exactly are we teaching the captain of the hockey team by scratching him for a game oh i don't think you're teaching sean Couturier anything I, I do not think I do not think this is this is a, you know, we're going to make Sean Couturier realize that he has to do different things by scratching it. Now, it's certainly going to piss him off. I mean, yeah. it's very obvious based on the interview that we did with him after Morning Skate today that he is not particularly happy no. with the situation. And he does not feel, well, he did say that he did talk to John Tortorella. He more or less said that there wasn't a lot of useful information given to him in that conversation beyond you need to play better. And Couturier is like, okay, well, what do you mean? I created a goal for Nick Friggin Delorier with five minutes left on Saturday's game. And I didn't see the ice for another shift. So yeah. I don't know what more I can show you. Now that's not what he said. That's more what I'm saying. But if he's thinking that I wouldn't blame him. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but no, I, I don't think Sean Couturier is learning anything. What I think this is, is it's, it's probably a combination of two things. Number one, I do believe that John Tortorella honestly thinks that Sean Couturier is playing like absolute garbage. And if I had to guess, what I think probably happened in this situation is that Couturier has that turnover on the fifth goal, where it's like a weak backhand clear. He doesn't get a lot on it. It gets, it gets blocked, and then Boston comes back right in the offensive zone and scores. I think as soon as that play happened, I think John Terrell was sitting, standing on the bench, was just like, he ain't playing next game. And that was just that he made up his mind right then and there. Because the fact that then he makes a really good play on the Delorier goal and doesn't see the guys the rest of the game tells me that, like, Torts had already made up his mind that, okay, well, the only reason why I'm giving him shifts is because this game's over. Once that game was no longer automatically over, it was like, all right, he's stapled to the bench again. I just think that decision was made once he made that mistake probably because Tortorella has been thinking about it for a while. Like, am I actually going to do it? And then he just decided, yeah, I'm going to do it. I think he's really, really frustrated with how Couturier is playing. So I think that's sincere. I also think, however, that this is less about him trying to teach Sean Couturier anything, because he knows Sean Couturier is going to learn anything from this. It's just going to piss him off. And maybe he'll get a little bit more out of him in the short term because Sean Couturier is pissed off and he wants to prove people wrong. But beyond that, not teaching him anything about the sport of hockey about tactics about maneuvers on the ice about how hard to work in practice he ain't learning shit from that what it might do is the flyers right now he's going into this game kind of a defensive mess they haven't been playing well for the better part of a, a month really a month and a half to be honest with you i suspect he thought like you know i heard you guys talking about this before i came on tortorella is an agent of chaos and <laughs> I think he, I have a suspicion that his his philosophy in this was we need to shake things up in some way because the status quo is unacceptable. What's the biggest bomb I can throw into this room? It's scratching the cat. And it just strikes me as the way John Tortorella thinks is like, well, I guess I'll be the villain here if this means that it shakes this team out of whatever rut they're in. And at least for this game, I don't think it, it I think it worked in this game. Now, whether it has long-term negative impacts for his relationship with Couturier and his relationship with the locker room, that remains to be seen. But for this game, I think it did work in terms of shaking them out of the status quo because they played a harder game all around. They blocked more shots. They, they back-checked better. They were more intense. So in the short term, I think it probably delivered the, the impact that he wanted it to deliver, even if 
I worry that it's going to have a much more negative impact over the long term, given the fact that he is like kind of now openly declared war on his captain. You think he puts him in next game? It's a good question. So I actually answered it was asked the same question. Um, I think it was NHL Network. I was on a radio hit earlier today. But they asked me, and I was like, look, some part of it's going to depend on how the team plays. Obviously, they won, so now the door is open. What I will say is that apparently, and I obviously was not there for this because this is down, I guess, in Florida is where they usually do it. You know, the GM meetings, um, the reporters down there caught up with Danny Breer. And the way Danny Breer explained it, it sounded like this is a one-game thing. Like, mm-hmm. that was just the way his, the way his answers framed it that you know he's just getting a reset and he'll be back in and hopefully he'll be able to help us out a lot during the stretch run so that leads me to believe he will be back in on thursday however who knows they they did get a win tonight maybe tortorella goes with the hall well i'm not changing the lineup but oh boy if i if i had to wager i think he'll be back in. i think this was a one game message sent not even to just to Couturier, but to the team as a whole. I think he'll be satisfied the message was apparently received the way he wanted it to be received, and he'll put Couturier back in. But the fact they won this game does leave the door open for it to be a, a multi-game scratch to be sure. We all silly like the mayor. 